This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2248, Surviving Times of Uncertainty, by Melanie Schwader of abrighterwild.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. This is not your typical podcast. There are no interviews, and it's nice and short, so you can listen daily and start the day off on the right foot. And speaking of short, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Surviving Times of Uncertainty by Melanie Schwader of abrighterwild.com. Here we sit in our respective homes, watching, waiting, unsure of what each day will bring. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought the world to a standstill, or at the very least, required a radical shift in daily operations. In the midst of stay-at-home orders, empty grocery store shelves, and a plummeting stock market, we're thrown into a new kind of limbo, a hazy, mirage-like place between selves, between identities that most of us have never experienced before. Millions of people are suddenly out of work, with restaurants, schools, and theaters shuttered for an indeterminate amount of time. Others are having to adjust to working from home or care for their kids full-time, often both. So where does that leave us as individuals, as humans, as a collective? What are we being called to do with this challenge before us? What is the path through the fear, the anxiety, the anger? I know that I'm perhaps a bit late to the game writing about the current world situation. Many people have already churned out blogs on how to stay productive or how to make the most out of this downtime. I've seen a somewhat disturbing trend of subtly pressuring people to use this time in quarantine to finally write that book, learn that new instrument, or start that side hustle. I think that while well-meaning, these kinds of messages only lead to more fear and shame. I don't know about you, but in the midst of a global crisis, unemployed, stressed out, unsure of what's coming, is the last time I wanna be told to get up and be productive. The first thing I might share with you then is to let go of those messages. You don't have to clean out your closet or start a new workout plan or learn a new language right now or ever. You don't have to launch a small business or Marie Kondo your entire house either. During a time of crisis, when your very health and livelihood are threatened, it can feel downright impossible to do anything beyond the bare minimum. And that's okay. It's okay if you feel like you're barely hanging on right now. It's okay if you haven't showered in three days, you're living in sweatpants, or your house is a mess. It's okay if you're struggling to work from home or struggling because you can't work at all. Whatever you are experiencing right now is okay, no matter what anyone else says. Another problematic message I've seen circulating lately is the joking about how fat we're all going to be coming out of quarantine, aka the hashtag quarantine 15. There's a lot of talk about how we're all gaining weight or letting ourselves go during this time. And while this may seem innocent at first, here's yet another layer of shame for how our bodies look or function. It's completely normal to be drawn towards heavier, more comforting foods right now. It's normal to be eating more than you usually might, and it's normal to gain weight right now. None of these things determine your worth. Whenever we face a crisis like this, we're being called to tune into the root chakra. This pandemic has thrown into sharp relief our most basic needs, shelter, food, sanitation, and social support. These are directly the themes of the chakra, safety, security, material needs, tribal family, etc., When these things are threatened, our little lizard brains go into overdrive, desperately trying to find ways to create safety. This can lead to things like hoarding physical possessions, toilet paper included, as well as hyper-focusing on food and eating more than usual. There are many different ways that our little lizard brains try to reclaim a sense of safety. Fight, freeze, or flee are our three basic modes under threat. And right now, many of us are feeling these as they manifest in our bodies, perhaps sitting paralyzed on the couch for hours on end, sniping out housemates, numbing out with food and alcohol and drugs or whatever else. If any of these sound like you right now, you're not alone. These are all things my clients have mentioned over the past couple of weeks. So what can we do? First, wrap yourself in as much compassion and forgiveness as possible. Remember, your brain and body are just trying to keep you safe. 
This won't last forever. Allow some flexibility in your coping mechanisms. Allow yourself to rest. Second, instead of getting too caught up in all the things that you can't do, try to focus on what you can do right now. You may not be able to go out and meet a friend for a coffee or attend a concert or go on a trip, but you're probably able to cook yourself a nice meal, listen to your favorite album, or FaceTime a loved one. Instead of thinking of the things you have no control over, bring your attention to things that you do have control over, like turning off the news, getting some fresh air, or taking a few minutes to meditate. Third, I'm reminded of one of my favorite quotes. If you don't see God in the crisis, look for God in the response, end quote. Whatever your personal beliefs may be about the force for good in the universe, we can probably all agree that it's hard to see the light or justice in a tragedy like COVID-19. But it's always there. Focus on the beauty, the courage, and the compassion that is coming out in response to this challenge. Surround yourself with positive stories of people getting better, people helping out, people sharing joy. Those stories are everywhere right now, if you know where to look. Fourth, create quiet and stillness whenever you can. You may feel your little lizard brain resisting this at first, and that's okay. Carve out some sacred space to just breathe. This can be through meditation, doing art, taking a nap, sitting out in the sunshine, doing some gentle stretching, or whatever else feels good. Take time away from the TV, social media, and noise and stimulation in general, at least once a day. Lastly, try not to let the isolation turn into too thick and impenetrable a cocoon. It's easy to sink down into the loneliness, despair, and depression, especially for extroverts and those used to lots of social support. While we may be separated, we're not doing this alone. Reach out and Skype a friend. Share funny memes via text with your siblings. Chat with a therapist online. Join a free streaming class. Start a Netflix watch party with loved ones. Use technology to stay connected to the world right now without guilt. Remember that this pandemic won't last forever. Yes, it's incredibly tragic and terrifying right now, but it is temporary. This too will pass. Don't be too hard on yourself. Relax into your heart space and breathe now and then. We will get through this together. You just listened to the post titled Surviving Times of Uncertainty by Melanie Schwader of abrighterwild.com. Thank you to Melanie. Interesting how this was written quite a while ago near the beginning of the pandemic in 2020. And yet here we are with COVID cases being incredibly high in 2022 and the stock market on a roller coaster. Feels like we're going through it all over again, but she gave us some good tips to think about. No need to think about all of them at once, but Even just one, if implemented today or even thought about, could go a long way. So hopefully it won't feel too stressful and uncertain for you. Thank you for listening and sticking around until the end. Have a great day if you're listening in real time and I'll see you tomorrow as usual, where your optimal life awaits.